happy homebrew Wednesday. Um, just drinking one of the last remaining um, old toms that I did um, well over a year ago. And I think it's like a year and a half in the bottle now. There's about two or three of these left. Still probably one of the best beers I did. Even it was a extract beer as well. And it was just really really good. Didn't come out a whole exactly uh, how the original old time is about seven and a half percent rather than eight and a half but you can really feel it after you've uh, you've had a pint of it and it's really nice just to have it kind of room temperature in this kind of weather um, I've got a couple more of these to send out to people I'm gonna get one out to um, Norfolk Kilbilly with a few beers and that we've uh, been chatting about beer mail but I've been waiting on a few beers to finish I've um, had the uh, the triple tykes um, Bulldog kit, which I've had a bottle of recently, which was tasting all right. It's, it is just a kind of like um, I think it's like a bitter or a brown ale or something. There's not a lot of hops going on. You do get a little hop tea bag, gives you kind of three or four ways to add it during the uh, fermentation or when you prior to brewing it. How you can add the hops to it. I kind of threw it in. You make a little hop tea um, a week after fermentation and through the the water and the the hop tea bag in at the end but how much it's probably made to it now I did think about adding extra hops in it but I just thought I'd keep it as um, basic as the kit was just to see what the kit was like so I've got that to um, condition a bit more before I send it out to anyone um, I've got the Ringwood 49er clone that I did a couple of weekends ago I'm going to bottle that this weekend um, again that's another one I want to send out so that's, that's waiting to go out to a couple of people um, that was alright, that, that brew day went okay but I kind of didn't get my exact volumes again kind of got a little bit frustrated with uh, trying to sort the volumes out despite kind of like working everything out on my first brew day and then kind of calculating that into uh, beer smith and that I still didn't end up with my expected uh, volumes hit the gravities and everything fine but it was just the, the volume at the end and that um, definitely need to get a bigger uh, hot liquor tank that I when I originally got the setup, I only got like a 20 litre boiler for the hot liquor tank. Stupidly, I kind of it was going cheap at the time, and I bid on it and won it, and then thought, oh damn, I need a 30 litre really rather than a 20 litre. It's okay for the initial um, mash, but then when you want to uh, sparge later on, you kind of have to top up halfway through the kettle or something, and then it's kind of I'd rather have all the the um, the liquid in there at one point, and then kind of. Um, sparge with it and that and because it's got the thermostat control it's really great because it holds the temperature and it's you know it's great for it's doing but then when you've got to top it up it's a bit of a pain um, so that's something I want to upgrade later next year maybe but for the meantime because I'm not brewing as much on that system I think I'm going to um, hold off uh, getting on to that I've done a couple of brewing the bags with the kit that I got that I showed on my channel before I did the stout that came with it um, that went okay. That was really, that was really good. Come out fine. Um, it's still fermenting away. That needs to be bottled Sunday, I think. Um, yeah, that seems to be okay. That's that's gone well. The only problem is being in the flat. There's no temperature control, so I don't have my fermentation fridge here and that. But that is the only the pitfall of brewing in the flat. But that's why I'm going to run for the next six months just so that I can get more brews in, and I'll, I want to brew less because brewing some of the, the 40 pints I've been doing so far is I just can't drink it all, I just, you know, as much as I love giving it away, you know, I, I want to have um, more to drink kind of thing, because I, I kind of find I get bored after the first two or three of the beers that I've had and then, you know, I want something new, so if I can make lots of small batches, I can condition them up and any like the hoppy ones I can drink straight away and I haven't got to worry about getting through 40 odd bottles. Um, so off the back of that, I am... Um, went and picked up some grains um, got a big 25 kilo bag of crushed uh, malt um, I'm storing that elsewhere and then got some several uh, other grains already crushed and they're stored in little pots kind of like air type ones um, picked up a few hops as well and that just to do a few different recipes I've got a few planned a few single hop beers and that get a little bit of practice in for the um, smash off that's happening next year um, yeah but the only thing was with the um, 
brew in the bag the second one I did, I did a bitter, just a plain English bitter using um, a golden type pot. Um, it kind of went okay. The, the, I ended up with less than I wanted to in the um, fermenting vessel, purely down to when I finished off. I used um, a protoflock tablet in it, but I used half. I think I maybe should have gone to for a quarter. I don't know if it would have made much difference in that, but the, it seemed to have so much protein and crap drop out at the end that there was like I just couldn't avoid it in the pot. Um, I've since read that people saying that you should get a sterilised spoon, give it a good stir, create like a whirlpool, and then siphon from the edge. And the first time I did it, like with the kit that you get, it says to like you know, because you don't have a tap on the uh, the little kettle you get with it, you just pour it straight over the, uh, the hot bags that you've got in it to try and catch any of the the stuff. And that one came out quite clear. I didn't hit the exact volume that I wanted to ferment out, but it was a lot clearer. But this one seemed to drop out a hell of a lot of proteins and crap and um, I just couldn't seem to get it all out I tried various things I've got a funnel and got some uh, very fine muslin over it and that that got blocked and beer went everywhere so I lost beer on the floor and then there was so much crap left in the pot that I just thought that's you know I must have left probably two litres in the pot because there was so much crap in it I've read a few things to say that brewing a bag can drop out more proteins and stuff like that and then I've read other things to say that it doesn't um, I got me. I do like the brew in the bag. It's easier for me in the flat. Um, takes up less time. There's less washing up. But I think from the whole point of view of doing the grains in the bag, I know that's the whole point of brewing the bag. Um, I'm just thinking I might get a smaller mash tun for the flat, um, like a cheap cool box or something. Um, I'm, I'm probably thinking that they probably drop quite dramatically in the winter time, and that when no one wants them, and that possibly. They'll I don't know, it might be the wrong way, it might be cheap to get it in the summer, obviously, but um, I have to have a look around. But um, yeah, I want to get a smaller mash tun for the flat, and uh, I don't know if I'll do the whole copper manifold, I have been thinking about it, or I might just go for a, a bazooka filter or something, something quite simple, because I'm only going to be mashing, I don't know, a couple of kilos of grains to three kilos at the most, and uh, do like a batch barge with that, and um, I might get a bigger brew pot as well because of the boil off. I'm running with a. I did use the 12 litre that came with the beer kit that I got, and I switched up to my 15 litre one. But I think I might get a 19 litre to account for a lot of things and um, run with that. I think it might be easier to have a little little mash tun and do a batch sparge. I know that the whole point of doing brew in the bag, you know, it cuts it down, has it in one vessel like a lot. But I just think for the time that's spending on it and that, and then if I end up with a really cloudy mess at the end, I kind of, you know, I want to uh, get a nicer beer for what I'm doing. Um, but going on to the thing I said earlier with my hot liquor tank for the um, the other setup I've got, I might even consider taking the 20 litre out of that and using that as my boiler, fitting a hot filter to that and using that as my main boiler. So I get a small mash tun and then using the 20 litre boiler in the flat and that will you know, help me produce the, the kind of 10 to 15 litre batches that I want to brew at a time. Really kind of 10 litre at the most, I don't want to produce much more than that. Um, let me think what else. I've had one beer kit go a bit crap, probably, I guess I'm considered lucky probably out of all the beers that I've done, I haven't done an awful lot. But it's the one that's probably gone wrong, I would say, and maybe not through my own fault. Um, that's the Festival uh, Razorback kit. Um, fermented out fine, and I've heard a lot of people had a lot of problems with it. Um, Hammerphone Brew had to ditch his whole batch because it went wrong. Um, but a lot of people said that maybe the hops were too much for it, the dry hops that you got with it. A lot of people found it was overly hoppy, overly bitter when they added the hops. Um, that wasn't my problem. My problem seems to be that it's severely overcarbonated. Now, considering the festival kits come with a pre-designed little packet, um, I think it does say the weight on it and that. But to be honest, I didn't bother reading it because every other time that I've brewed them and I've had great success with them, is just rip it open, mix it with a bit of water, add it to the bottling bucket, and um, bulk prime it that way, and then bottle. And that's meant to be the right amount of uh, priming sugar for the right amount of beer, so the 23 litre batch. So in theory you can't go wrong. Um, but it's clearly overcarbonated it. I've got one more festival kit to do which is the Summer Glory one. 
I've just got the old flowers in it. Um, I think when I do that, I'll probably weigh out the sugar just to make sure on that. But from my point of view, I was quite upset that if you was a new home brewer and you got that kit, you know, you expect everything in that to be right. You know, you don't want you know something to mess you up in that. And I like to think that I'm kind of semi kind of experienced with doing kits and things like that now. You know, and it was even you know a mistake for me because I didn't know if there's extra sugar in there. I just assume what's on the packet is what's in there, and you add it in. And now all the bottles are over carbonated. Um, Hammer Foam Brew's got two, but I said, you know, don't bother opening the two or three that I've opened, just gush out and they bring up all the sediment from the bottom. But, you know, what I've tasted tastes okay, but it just looks like shitty dishwater at the end of it because it's just kind of all murky, it's kicked up all the yeast and that, and some of them are just erupting like volcanoes. I don't, I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that once you've over carbonated a bottle, that ain't ever going to settle down. That's, you know, I've tried cracking a couple and letting it gently kind of ease out but you know it's just kind of there's so much in there that it's just it's just not going to happen um, I did make a complaint to Richie's who make them who never emailed me back which was really nice um, great customer service there I have to say um, I did email him again haven't heard nothing in that um, I have contacted someone else to try and you know get in touch with them on my behalf and that and um, See if I get any answers that way because it's just it's just a bit annoying. I mean, I'm not really expecting anything back or you know, if anything, just a little bit of feedback from the supplier just to say well you know or acknowledge that okay sorry we'll have to check that batch or you know when did you buy it? There might have been a problem with such and such and that. But to not reply back at all, kind of like you know we've got your money we don't care about you know more kind of attitude really kind of you know is a bit annoying. I'd rather kind of like they come out and say well. You know, did you try this? Did you try that? But I'm guessing, you know, they hold no disclaimer to that if you mess it up, then it's your fault because obviously you've made the beer kit. But if that fault is because of them, because they put the wrong amount of things in a packet, then, you know, that ain't my fault. But hey ho. So whether or not I hear anything back about that, but um, it has kind of like put me off a little bit. Of kind of like, not so much using them, but trusting what's in packets kind of maybe you should make sure but I find that a little bit unfair for the for the new home brewer who's buying that kit takes it home chucks everything in reads it's the instructions and that and then right at the last minute his beer is going to be messed up just because of the manufacturer not because of his own fault so you know we'll see um, probably don't think I'll do many more kits for a while um, I want to use the grain up it is crushed as well so I'm worried it's going to go off before I manage to use it all up so I'm looking to do a lot of kind of brewing the bags or maybe some bigger all grain batches if I do a test batch of 10 litres and find that's a really great recipe I'll find the time to do a big 23 litre batch if I can squeeze that out if I ever manage it um, and then go from there um, there was one other thing um, that I was going to say, it's getting quite long for me um, it's about an app that I've been using uh, I think it's only on Android at the moment it might be on um, iPhone it's called Untapped. Um, that's U N T A P P D, and um, it's basically a app. I don't know if you can really see on there that allows you to select a brewery, whatever you, beer you've had, and then kind of like almost like tag yourself in it, kind of thing. You can leave a little mini review. You can score it. You can rate it and it, it keeps account of every beer you've had and then it kind of gives you like a, you unlock a badge if you've had like 10 IPAs and there's a badge for drinking a beer every Thursday in the month and things like that you know often you I haven't seeked out badges to unlock I just sort of get them after I've been unlocking things and that but you can add friends on there um, you can share it on Facebook you can share it on Twitter um, and you can follow people but the cool thing is if you had a beer it monitors that you've had it how many times you've had it you know every time you tag it in there but you can also search for that beer locally so if you there's a beer you like in it and that and you was out you could tap it and it supposedly I've, I've tried it a couple of times it'll give you somewhere within that vicinity that's selling it either I think by bottle or a uh, pub so there's quite a cool lot of features in there and that it seems to be quite a few people using it now as well I quite like the idea of it and that I mean I tend to try and take a photo of every uh, bottle label I've had um, I've uploaded a lot to Facebook because it's kind of a free way to store photos I think um, I've had about I think must be about 750 different beers now 
but um, so obviously I, I was going to sit there and go through some but it would just take too long so I've kind of started afresh on here and there's about I don't know 24 25 different ones on there now but I think it's quite a good app it's, it's something a bit different you know it's a way to keep track of what you had and uh, find it when you're out kind of thing I think that's pretty much it so cheers everyone till next time